Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zias Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm here at the HP Imagine AI event in New York City. I'm here with Eric Gallion uh, for HP. Uh, what, Eric, what do you do here? What's your role at HP? Yeah, so I am the consumer press review program manager. So when we have a new product come out, I work with our press team. We uh, test units and get them sent out to different reviewers uh, for reviews. Like me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. 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 And so this is a big event for you guys. You talked a lot about the vision of AI and uh, all the great things you can do, but you announced a new product, right? Yes. The new um, uh, Omni Ultra uh, 14. Uh, tell me a little bit about it. Why is this such a unique device? Yeah. So this is the Omnibook Ultra 14. Um, it's using an AMD 300 series uh, uh, chip, and it will go up to 55 tops. Um, it is also using the the AMD NPU, the AI NPU as well, and it has uh, the AMD Radeon discrete graphics in it as well. So definitely a more powerful, uh, a very powerful uh, AI machine. And so when you say it can go up to 55 tops, give me give me a sense of what a typical PC might be. You know, I've got uh, like a MacBook Pro with an M2 processor. What would that be? Uh, I'm not 100% sure what the MacBook okay. M2 is, but um, I know when we when we announced the next gen AI PCs, it had to be at least 40 tops. Okay. Oh, so, so you're way above that threshold. Yeah. So we're we're above that threshold now, and I think you're going to see us continue to to work with partners and innovate and get above that threshold. Okay. And what does an AI PC let you do that perhaps you couldn't do on a normal PC? So what they'll do is it allows you to really make this your companion. It allows you to make your life easier. So being able to generate images faster or work faster with LLMs or faster token per second than, than we have in the past. Just being able to do those AI functions much quicker than we have been able to in the past. Can they just do that in the cloud? But now we're able to do a lot of this locally, Local, okay. which is making it one much faster and uh, very secure as well. Oh, and also, so if I'm in an area with, with lousy Wi-Fi, which seems to be everywhere, <laughs> Uh, or even just poor connectivity. Uh, there's a lot of rural areas that don't have great bandwidth. That now it, it kind of democratized the use of AI. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, I also understand you have a number of ISV partners here. Uh, so I'm going to go over and talk to them and see what they're doing with your device. All right. Sounds All right, great. So, anyways, Eric, thanks for your time. Yeah, thank right. you. Thanks. All right, I'm here at the Omnibridge stand inside the HP. Uh, Expo Hall with uh, Adam Munder. You're the uh, founder of uh, OmniBridge. Can you tell me what the company does? So our company, OmniBridge, we're focusing on building a technology that does real-time translation between deaf individuals that use sign language and people who use spoken English. So we've built this bi-directional communication that allows both deaf and hearing communities to have one conversation through the power of AI. Okay, and so tell me about your relationship with HP and why the AI PCs are so important here. Yeah, we're really excited about this. All of the AI tech being able to put on one device, on the AI PC, not having to rely on cloud is absolutely amazing. Having the capability to not rely on a Wi-Fi connection, to reduce cost from the cloud, to be able to put everything on an edge device, to improve inferencing and translation time between both sides of that conversation. Have you been able to quantify the benefits uh, as far as speed of translation or accuracy or things like that go? So our accuracy right now is about 80% as far as the translation. So right now, we're still in a, an alpha phase. Okay. So we're currently optimizing, where we'll see further benefits in the future, more on the back end. Um, so when we do release a product, we'll be able to balance that workload on the NPU, CPU, and GPU as well. Oh, that's great. And so what excites you most about AI and uh, what that's gonna allow you to do in the future? We're really excited about this. It's going to remove all kinds of communication barriers between deaf and hearing. That means that deaf individuals don't have to rely on interpreters to have that real-time conversation. They'll be able to use the OmniBridge technology to translate anytime, anywhere. 
We're also focusing on building a technology that's faster than the current solution. Writing back and forth, texting, or just gesturing in general. OmniBridge will be able to make smooth conversations you know, for these short five, 10 minute conversations much faster instead of having to bring in an interpreter, which unfortunately there aren't a lot of qualified interpreters. The logistics of booking an interpreter is difficult. They have to be booked two weeks in advance and they're really expensive. And we'll be able to fill that gap to have that conversation anytime, anywhere. Yeah, I think one of the promises of AI is to uh, really democratize the use of technology and uh, it's good to see a company like yourself actually uh, really uh, uh, bringing that vision to reality. So uh, appreciate that. Yeah, we're really excited. Because we're all Intel employees and Intel's really pushing to have this technology available and to be able to work with HP and have it optimized on the NPU, it's very exciting. Okay, now if people want to learn more about OmniBridge, uh, where, where can they go? Yeah, visit OmniBridge's website, omnibridge.ai, and you'll be able to find all information there. All right, so I'll include that in the YouTube description below, and uh, thanks very much for your time, Adam. You're very welcome, thank you. Thanks. Okay, I'm here at the Virtual Sapiens uh, booth. I'm here with Rachel Costner. You're the co-founder and CEO of the company. That's right. Uh, uh, tell me, what, what does Virtual Sapiens do? So at Virtual Sapiens, we use AI to give professionals feedback on their presence and communication skills. We do so in a way that's in real time. So if you think about being on a Zoom call or a Teams call, our AI will actually run in the background. So no one has to see it running, but it's a private coach giving you feedback in real time so you can show up most effectively as a communicator. Yeah, so I, I watched your demo a little bit earlier yeah. and I noticed that if somebody's slouching, it tells you you're slouching. If you're on your phone, it yeah. tells you are not paying attention. So I'm thinking of the implications of that to myself. Yep. Uh, you know, I, I do a lot of meetings, obviously. Yeah, as, and, we, uh, as we all do. Yeah, and, uh, and, what, and what kind of feedback have you had from customers? They like it? Uh, they, does it help them in, you know, improve the way they show up and things? One of the most interesting things we've heard from our customers, which was something we were worried about when we first launched the company, uh, was how people were going to respond to AI feedback. Right? The feedback is coming from our AI, our yeah. models. And it's behavioral, so a lot of it's very personal. Facial expression variation, how you're using hand gestures, your posture, these are behaviors that are ingrained in all of us, right? Um, what we found is that users actually prefer to receive the feedback from our AI because the AI reflects... Really? Yeah, honestly, it's been yeah, fascinating, yeah. yes. The AI reflects your behaviors back on you telling you what you did when, showing you images of how you looked at specific points. Um, but there is a lack of judgment in the way that this feedback is delivered because it's so objective, right? Um, so if you think about working with a human coach, it can feel a little more vulnerable, right? To have a human telling you that things are doing wrong. Yeah. Um, and it, it, that's been a surprise, but it, it's been a pleasant surprise yeah. to know that people have responded well to the AI feedback. Yeah, uh, and it probably shows them things they didn't even know they were doing. Exactly, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. uncovering blind spots. Yeah, yeah. well it's interesting because people do get coaches, professional speaker coaches, it would make sense that you would want a professional meeting coach as well. And I think that would even carry over into real meetings, uh, like in-person meetings. It too, absolutely so. does, yeah, yeah. yep. And so as I mentioned, we're here at the HPE uh, Imagine AI event. They announced their new uh, 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 Omni Ultra 14 AI PC. Yep. Uh, what did that mean to you? Why is that so important to Virtual Sapiens? So at Virtual Sapiens, we, from the beginning, had a vision for processing our AI in real time on device client side. A big part of the reason behind that was for privacy, right? We want our users to know that their video and their likeness is never leaving their device to be processed and analyzed. Um, this helps with a number of things, but when we discovered that HP was coming out with this new laptop and we've been speaking with HP directly for a while, it was really exciting to us because one of the other critical factors in our software being successful is is the accuracy of our models, the number of frames per second that we can access, and that all just takes power. And if you're just working with, with CPU and GPU, 
that everything starts to slow down, right? And we right. can't have a software that is compromising the efficiency of workflow in, in other ways, right? So the NPU just gives us a whole other ball game to, to play. And what have you tried processing that in the cloud instead? I mean, if you tried processing that in the cloud, number one, that video would have to leave your device. Oh, right. Right? So yeah. that's a big, we yeah, don't yeah. want to do that. Uh, number two, there would be more latency between your uh, feedback and the behavior that actually instigated that feedback. Yeah. Right? Like, it, we do great post-call reporting, but it's the in-call immediacy of feedback that can really help rewire muscles and habits. Yeah, no, I can see that. And oh, so, and it's so expensive, I have to say. It's, it's yeah. very expensive to process stuff on servers. So we, we get to sidestep a lot of costs. Yeah, no, and I think just when you think about the things people do in these meetings, they're discussing financials, m and things like that, uh, you wouldn't want that video leaving your, your, your no, local prem, so, no. yeah. I mean, and many of our clients, like, they're discussing IP and new innovations. Yeah. And, it's just so much easier for us to partner with enterprise clients when we say, like, we don't even record, let alone transmit or store. Yeah. So. All right. And uh, so if you look out ahead, right, there's lots and lots of stuff going on with yeah. AI today. Uh, you're just one great example. What excites you most? What are you looking forward to? I'm really excited about, you know, un uncovering more ways we can use AI in a way to amplify human qualities, right? So we're obviously very focused on human communication. Um, right now, we're not doing much in the way of using AI to generate avatars that we can practice with or do role plays with. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. And so that's one spot. Like, we have an AI role play that we launched a few days ago, but we're not using a video avatar on the other end. And I, I'd love to get to the point where we can leverage that as well. Okay, well... Uh, anyways, Rachel, thanks for your time. I'm looking forward and a little nervous about trying your product out. It's so, be great. so we'll see how that goes. Baseline's so. always rough, and then you improve <laughs> yeah, yeah, and feel yeah. great. Okay. Awesome. Uh, so, anyways, thanks for your time, and really appreciate the introduction, of virtual safety. My pleasure. Thank thanks. you. All right. Well, I'm here at the Locust.ai stand, and I'm here with uh, Manel Terraza, You're the CEO of Locust.ai. Uh, what do you guys do? Tell me about what you do. Yeah, we work on uh, security solutions uh, to add, through AI, a layer of safety and trust to voice communications. Okay, and at the center of it, it's uh, being able to help people uh, understand if what they listen to, if a voice is real or not, now that AI can be used to generate synthetic content in a very easy way. Yeah, and uh, when you say synthetic content, I think it's a nice way of saying deep fakes. Right, there's been some uh, very high profile cases of, mm -hmm. uh, of deep fakes. How, how big a problem is this right now? Yeah, uh, exactly. And should it scare people? Yeah, 100%. I mean, again, as any technology, uh, AI, and in particular the, the ability to create voice loans, is not bad. It's just that it can be misused, right? And AI being uh, such, let's say, an open space where open source, let's say, solutions are everywhere, right? Uh, this even, let's say, makes it easier to create uh, synthetic content by, by, for malicious purposes, right? So we are seeing a lot of uh, situations happening both at the enterprise uh, level, uh, executive impersonation, impersonation of a, of, a, of a supplier, you know, to, to, to make them pay something, etc., as well as the uh, consumer or end user uh, case, right, where people are getting uh, scammed by video calls, uh, phone calls, etc., where an AI voice is being used. Uh, to trying to impersonate someone that you know and asking you for money or for data. Yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, like I said, we've had some pretty high profile use cases. And so, how does your software work? You can actually tell the difference between a real um, uh, audio signal and a fake one. That's right. So we basically we use the same technology that is used to synthesize a voice. Oh, okay? so same technology, good and bad. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So we train uh, neural networks to be able to uh, differentiate. Uh, what makes a voice different when it's real than when it's fake, right? So basically we look at uh, different properties that we know uh, are very unique uh, for real voices, okay? And that's our way uh, of training neural networks that are able to, let's say, work as classifiers and uh, when listening to, to a voice uh, to be able to, uh, to detect if it's real or not. And so we're here at the HP events I mentioned, they announced their new notebook. Uh, why is an AI PC so important for you? Yeah, I think uh, the AI PC and the neural processing unit, uh, it's ground, groundbreaking and really like truly differential for uh, what, we are, what we are doing, right? Um, what we are doing basically requires three things. One, let's say for this to, 
uh, let's say, this uh, detection to be provided in real time, right? No one wants to let uh, be let know after the scam has happened, you know, that they were scammed. They want to know, let's say, what it's happening so that they can react, yeah. right? So real time is super important. And so you are real time. Yeah, it's yeah. real time, okay? Uh, so every second of audio we provide uh, some information. Real time is the first, uh, the first topic. The second one is for this to be an efficient inference process, you know, something that does not, let's say, consume a lot of resources, yeah, and, or do it in an efficient way. And third, more, most importantly, in many use cases, it's about privacy, right? Uh, when uh, so we you really are, wouldn't want that in the cloud. Exactly. Yeah. So in certain use cases, uh, especially in personal communications, if you and me are uh, speaking over a video call, right, that conversation to be uh, to go on a cloud sometimes might be sensitive, especially in an enterprise environment, right? Yes. So for this to happen in a in a locally on the device, uh, it's the only way to do it, right? So basically, the AIPC and the use of the MPUs is what enables, let's say, uh, this to be done in the way it should be done, right? So it's really it's yeah. really differential. Yeah. Okay. And last question: When you look out in the future, there's lots and lots of stuff happening in AI. It's all we ever talk about now. What excites you the most? What what do you what do you what's your vision of what you'll be able to do? Yeah. Again, I think that AI is basically um, a base technology, you know, that can be applied in multiple contexts, right? So I think that anything that is related to enhancing the human capabilities, whether that, that is, let's say, for creative purposes, okay? Or whether that is for things like, like what we do, which is basically we are helping people understand if what they're listening to is real or not, because the human capabilities uh, cannot do it right now. It's very difficult already for the human ear to differentiate between a real voice or a synthetic one. So everything that is, let's say, enhancing the capabilities of humans uh, for creative purposes, for security, for productivity, this is what I think excites me the most about, about AI. Yeah. All right. Uh, anything else you want to add? No, thanks a lot. No, no, thank you. And, and thanks for fighting this fight. Uh, we always hear about the great things AI can do. Uh, sometimes I think we forget about the negative side of it, but I uh, appreciate you guys trying to uh, help customers actually, or people understand what's real and what's not real. Super. So, so Thank nice. you. Thanks. <laughs>